Hey everyone, um, my name is Trevor from Kapow Audio and uh, just wanted to kind of go through a quick example of one of the events that we uh, have set up for a game called The Forest, um, which you can play on PC at the moment, which is in early access. Um, the reason why we kind of just wanted to go through and show you this is kind of a little bit um, of our contribution to the, the Noise Vember hashtag that's going on on Twitter at the moment, um, which you should really check out because there's lots of really, really cool things happening on there. Um, but also just kind of us trying to be a little bit more visible with some of the, um, the what we think are cool things that we're, um, we're doing in the projects that we're working on at the moment. Um, so for this particular event, um, what we're going to do is show you the example uh, in FMOD, which is the, the audio middleware that we're using, uh, as well as give you the, uh, the end game example um, towards, the, towards the end of the video, which will show what, we're, what we've been doing, but in the context of the, of the gameplay. So basically what this event is for is in the game you can uh, pick up a turtle shell, um, or not pick up, you can kind of kill a turtle and take the shell from it. Um, but picking it up sounds nicer. Uh, and what you can do is you can then uh, essentially use the, the turtle shell as a slide. Um, so you can kind of go skating around the different terrains and things like that. Um, and I guess the, a couple of the main things we had to consider when uh, I was designing this event uh, was initially the, the types of terrain that you're going to be you're able to use it on. Um, which basically came down to there's a, a dirt type terrain, which is like your grass and your normal dirt and so on, uh, as well as snow. Um, they were the, the two main terrains that we've got working in the event a bit more. Um, so we may add to those in the future depending on uh, what else it can be used on. Um, so the event could change, but for the moment we're just concentrating really on um, the dirt, which is like your default terrain and the, the snow terrain. Um, and we also had to consider uh, we wanted the sound to communicate the speed that you were going. So um, in the game, the player can move at different speeds. Um, this is when they're not using the shell and the same with the shell. So you can start moving slowly and then your velocity can increase over time um, depending on um, whether you're kind of on a, um, a steep hill or if you're going down a steep hill or if you're on the snow, you travel faster than compared to what you do on normal dirt terrain. Um, and we wanted to communi that, communicate that as well. So um, what we did with that is uh, we added in the initial parameter here, which is called speed. Um, so that's the first parameter we'll look at. So initially what that does is that is tying into the velocity that the player object is traveling. Um, so as the player object, when they're on the shell, um, is as, is that, is, as that velocity increases, um, what will happen is this parameter will increase. So it'll go from zero to one, but it will go, um, it'll increasingly go over time. And that's going to affect what we have here. So before we show you that working, I'll just play the event as normal. So you can hear it's just a real subtle movement of dirt and there's kind of grass and, and leaves that we've got going through there, which you can see running through on the different tracks. Now, if I move over to the speed parameter, we can have a look if we go down here to the, the master track. Um, we've got a high pass cutoff frequency, which will increase over time. And we've also got volume, which will increase over time. Now, the only time these are going to kick in is when uh, the speed, param speed parameter is actually uh, increasing. So at the moment, it's at zero. So there's no real, there's no change at all. But if we slowly increase this, in here that will get louder and it will become a little bit clearer with the highs until we get to one and you can hear it moving through like that and again that can change depending on what's what's happening in the game so let's stop that um, so the next parameter that we're going, so the dirt plays by default, so we don't need to really look at that parameter yet, but the next uh, parameter we can look at is the snow parameter. Now, what we're doing with this um, is you can see here, there's three tracks here. So there's a couple of multi-sounds and there's a scatterer sound. And what they have is they're just containers for the snow sounds that we want to trigger when the player's on the snow terrain. 
Um, so rather than having it go uh, increasingly over time like the speed parameter does, this one essentially just turns on and off. Um, so if we put the speed up to one and start playing that, this will just be the uh, default dirt sound. And now if I, see if I increase that over time, nothing's changing. But once it gets to one, you can hear there's a change in that texture. So what it's done there is it has ducked the dirt sounds and the snow sounds and now the ones that are playing. Now if I push that back to zero, the dirt's back on. So there's a couple of instances in, in the game where you know you can move from terrain uh, dirt, of dirt type to snow type pretty quickly. And so that's why we have it kicking in like that. And it seems to be working really, really nicely in game. Um, the next thing we had to consider is uh, what happens when the player's in the air. So initially when we first designed it, um, we had it running as we've demonstrated here. So you had the dirt or the snow. Um, and the speed working. But what happens is because you can get airborne um, quite quickly and quite easily in the game because um, you can travel pretty quickly. Um, so you can become airborne quite quickly and quite often as well. Uh, so what we did when we first ran that is it just it kind of felt a little bit off um, because you were hearing all of this noise as you were traveling around. Um, and then all of a sudden you were in the air and there was nothing really until you landed back on the ground. And because you could go quite high depending on how um, quickly you were going, it just felt empty. It didn't uh, feel like we were communicating to, to anyone playing the game that you know, you're know you skidding through the air essentially or you're traveling really quickly through the air. So what we, um, what we experimented with and what ended up being included in it um, is this air parameter that we have here. Now what this does is similar to what we've got with the snow. Um, so essentially, we've got a couple of uh, multi-sounds here and a scatterer sound. Um, and what they have is we have air, gu air gushing sounds and we have some cloth movements to kind of uh, simulate or communicate like the, the, tra the traversing through the air, like with your clothes and the wind going through your clothes and things like that as well. Um, and there's an impact sound both on the zero and both on the one for the event here so just to kind of make it feel a bit more um textural when you either take off or when you land on the event so if we hit play so we again this would have switched from zero up to one and then back to zero when the player's back on the ground so if the player goes up into the air it will hit one so we'll do that now so you can hear there was a little bit of a rock texture of kind of them skidding off and you can hear the cloth and you can hear the air now. And then if we go back to zero to simulate the player hitting the ground again, back on the ground. So having those different types of events gives us pretty cool control over what's going on in the game. So again, we've got the snow, we've got speed, which increases over time and that affects both the default dirt parameter and the snow parameter. And we have the air going through as well. And what happens with the air as well is it will duck the dirt and it will also check if um, the player's on snow. So if we're on snow like that, you can see here that it will kick in. The snow is still at one because we're not really checking in here whether the player's on dirt or on snow, we're just doing it manually. So what would happen in that instance is the snow would just turn back to, to zero. We'd have the air effect like that as well. And that's essentially it. So obviously there's a lot of um, coding, so the implementation side of things going into it. So mainly with that, um, we've got things on objects on the player that are checking what type of terrain they're on, um, whether they're airborne or not, um, and also the velocity that the, the player object is moving in the game. And that's all communicating back to FMOD. 
um, and controlling those parameters that we have here and kind of going through and, and determining the logic of what the event's doing, um, which we just kind of showed you manually um, over here. So hopefully that's a, it's a small, short insight into, um, into what we're, we're doing with, with at least one of the events that we've got on here. Um, and we're hoping to uh, go through this and show a couple more of the events um, in the near future. Um, but what we'll do now is we'll jump out of FMOD uh, and we will show you an example of uh, the, the turtle sled uh, in-game. So thanks for listening and uh, hopefully this has kind of given you a little bit of a, an insight into to what we're doing.